Are you tired of being overcharged and forced into paying a monthly subscription for your Mac and Windows software? Well, if you are, currently we're having a 50% off discount on all the latest Mac and Windows software, such as AutoCAD, SolidWorks, Photoshop, Microsoft Office, and much more. Our 50% off discount will be ending soon, so be sure to text us Need Software to 213-640-9738. That's 213-640-9738. We aim to please, so expect 24-7 technical support, the latest premium software, instant software links delivered to your email, and PayPal Buyer's Protection Guarantee. The white supremacists use division as a weapon, dividing our families, our wealth, rewarding traitors, murdering heroes. Mm -hmm. Yet we survived. We fought for our reparations. Now it's our turn to divide and administer God's power. I am Agent Nuria Sellers, a foundational black American. I promise that nothing will come between us. Buy the sci-fi novel, Nothing Will Come Between Us. Available January 22nd. Pre-order online today at Amazon and Google Play. Spirit of 1811 Publishing.com. Our story, our family. Racism is the most powerful system on the planet, yet it is often perceived as the most taboo subject to discuss. World-renowned activist and best-selling author Tariq Nasheed takes on this challenge head-on in his new book, Foundational Black American Race Baiter. This is the most important book you will need in order to understand the mechanisms of systemic racism and how to counter this system. Get Foundational Black American Race Baiter now at Amazon and BarnesandNoble.com. Also get limited autographed collector's editions of the book at OfficialFBA.com. My name is Black Ice. And I'm Akees. And we're the Black Narrative. We are a Black First and Hebrew Israelite channel on YouTube that broadcasts live every Tuesday and Thursday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Every week we discuss controversial issues and challenge false narratives that are fed to black people through mass media. We share our research through videos and encourage uncomfortable conversations amongst the black community. Look at The Black Narrative on YouTube or go to our website, www.theblacknarrative.tv. Shalom. All right. All right, we're here. All right. Everybody come on in the room. We're here right now. Glad to have everybody tuning in. Welcome to another exciting episode of Tariq Radio. And as you know, I'm your gracious host. My name is Tariq Nasheed. And I have on my throwback Fila tracksuit on. What y'all know about Fila? I'm rocking the, the Fila, the, the throwback Fila right now. That's how I'm feeling. Glad to have y'all tuning in. Everybody come on in the room. Let me give people a chance to come on in. Listen, while you're coming on in here, I'm going to need you to hit that like button. Then I'm going to have to have you hit that subscribe button, ladies and gentlemen. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button, ladies and gentlemen. All right, if you have not subscribed, I need you to really hit that subscribe button very hard waiting on people to get on up in here yes indeed i'm looking very 80 ish and 90 ish right now with my feeler but i'm doing what i do glad to have everybody here hope everybody had a great holiday weekend i hope you guys had a wonderful holiday weekend i posted some holiday pictures with my beautiful family um as did many people. We had a lot of uh, plebiscite island trolls pop in try to, trying to get attention. We had a lot of these plebiscite island trolls, a lot of these mostly non-FBA trolls who look for a reason to whine like a bitch. Let me say this. This whining to other black people is the most bitch made, useless, pointless thing you can do. You, nothing spells non-productivity than hopping on black people's pages whining or just getting with black people and whining to other black people. 
And most of the people who do that are really non-FBA because they do that back home. That's a part of the culture back home. Just it's a bunch of niggas. Y'all just whine into each other, which is pointless. That's why you had to bounce. That's why you, you had to get the hell on from where you from. But this thing where y'all get around Negroes and, and whine to other black people, that is the worst. Because it's not only pointless, it's wasted energy. And basically, it's a way to get attention. It's just some old desperate attention whoring. That's why your family, if you notice, I don't really like debating other black people. Whenever I'm going in or having a talk, I, I like to debate the non-black people because these are the people who are they're in positions over us. They're in positions over us, so we need to know how to counter their narratives. Because as our brother Neely Fuller says, they like to beat us down with words. So they're the people who are in power positions over us. So I give people tips on how to break down their words. When I'm doing YouTube Live or, or Twitter space, I like to have the white supremacists on there so that you can learn how to debunk their talking points. See, that's constructive because see, when you're at your job, you hear those talking points every day from those in the dominant society. And you need to know how to break those down, especially if you are a black person who happens to be on a jury somewhere. You need to know how to debunk these people's talking points. Let's say, for example, you're on a jury and there's a bunch of white supremacists in there trying to play the word salad game. You have to learn how to break their word salad down because it might come in handy at a very pivotal moment. You understand? You better know how to debunk their talking points at a very pivotal time, especially in a courtroom in a jury pool somewhere. Because they have these white supremacists in these jury pools. And here's the problem. They don't have anybody challenging them. You understand? Because they get in these jury pools, they come up with these little asinine, weak-ass white supremacist talking points and they just go with it. Nobody challenges it. Or they'll have some type of butter biscuit eating Sambo as the lone Negro on the jury and he'll go along with it. Y'all remember out there the Walter Scott shooting, the race soldier who shot Walter Scott? What was that race soldier's name? My South Carolina people, help me out, please. What was that race soldier who killed Walter Scott and then it ended up being a hung jury because they made they had one lone Negro on the jury, this big, juicy, moist coon. They had a big, moist coon as the jury foreman. And we come to find out, we looked at some of his paperwork. He had some kind of charges that they had on him. Yeah, Michael Slager. Y'all remember that juicy coon they had on the trial? And they had him doing all the splaining. When it was a hung jury, they had the coon go out here and splain a big moist coon, LGBT nigga, out here splaining. Well, a lot of folks didn't know what happened. See, you had to be there in the jury. See, you have to be there to, to smell it, to taste it. You had to be, you had to see and to see the gun and you had to feel the gun and touch it. Had him nigga splaining. You see, he wasn't in there challenging nobody. He was in there trying to find him a damn zaddy. You understand? This is why it's important for black people to know how to debunk these talking points. I don't, I don't like wasting time. What am I debating with another Negro for? That's pointless. That's like two slaves on the bottom of a slave ship debating, and we're still on the bottom of the slave ship. So that's why I don't really debate with other black folks like that. That's absolutely pointless. And plus, when you debunk Negroes who are just trying to be honorary or contrary just for the sake of being contrary, they just get to trolling anyway. So it's, it's so pointless. It's all about them getting attention. It's all, yeah, Dorsey Montgomery, that's his name. Google Dorsey Montgomery, for those who don't know. So I say that to say... During the holidays, you had some of these plebiscite island, non-FBA, coon trolls 
all up in my um, social media complaining. You know, we had on holiday clothes and, you know, we were giving shout outs for the holidays and we had some of these phony, fake outrage niggas. Hold on, nigga, you celebrate Christmas? Oh, you're not keeping it real, nigga. How do you talk about black empowerment and you celebrate Christmas? Now, these are niggas trolling. I don't celebrate anything. By default, all of us are celebrating the holidays. And I've explained that before. By default, in the prison, you're going to by default celebrate whatever celebrate mean and define your definition of celebrate. Staying home with your family, is that celebrating? Buying presents for your children, is that celebrating? I mean, let's, let's, do, let's get the words right because everybody's celebrating by default because for the holidays, nothing is open. You're not at work. So you're at home with your family. If you have one, that's a celebration of the holidays. You haven't, you didn't kick open the door of Taco Bell and say, I demand to work. I demand to work. I am not going to stay home and celebrate a white man's holiday. I demand to work. I want to work. And even if you did go to work on the holiday, you're going to get paid overtime. You're going to get paid holiday pay. Even if you do have to work on the holiday, you're not, if you take that money, you're celebrating the holiday. If you take that overtime pay, you're celebrating the holiday, niggas. Yeah, if you worked, if you got your ass out there at that job, at FedEx, and you worked on Christmas, and fuck the white man holiday, fuck that shit. I am not going to stay home and celebrate on the white man's holiday. And then you go to work, they're going to give you overtime pay. Are you going to say, no, I'm not going to take this dirty money. I'm not going to take it. I won't take this dirty Christmas money. This is the white man's holiday. No, your ass is going to take that money and buy you some Joloff. Let's stop playing. Said Taco Bell was closed. Not all of them. There was a Taco Bell open over here by where I live. And Starbucks was open too because I ordered a coffee. And a motherfucker delivered it too. I ordered a coffee and somebody delivered it and that motherfucker had on sandals. It was somebody who was non-FBA. It was somebody with some sandals on and a soccer shirt who delivered my Starbucks. That same nigga who delivered my Starbucks probably got on the internet, fuck these niggas celebrating the holiday. Hold on, ding, hold on. I got to make a delivery. <laughs> then you put on your elf hat and drive your ass and deliver the coffee, nigga, with your elf hat on, talking about what you ain't going to do. Fuck these niggas. <laughs> this is some bullshit. Celebrating the white man's holiday. I, I dare not do that. Hold on. Jingle bells, jingle bells. Here's your coffee. Happy holiday. J jingle all the way. Dancing through the snow. Singing Christmas carols while you're delivering lattes, nigga. Yeah, y'all motherfuckers drove Uber. If you drove Uber, you celebrated the holidays. Because you were delivering Christmas food, nigga. All you Joel off eat motherfuckers talking about what you ain't going to do, what you ain't going to celebrate, you would... You were delivering pumpkin spice latte holiday coffee this weekend, niggas. Y'all were delivering all of the pumpkin spice snowman cookies, all that shit. You would, that's celebrating the holidays. Y'all were delivering the hell out of them snowman cookies. Oh, you were celebrating. Yes, you were. By default. You're celebrating by default because we're in a prison. In the prison, you're going to do what they do in the prison. By default, you're forced to do it. You understand? Now, you don't have to have beliefs in Santa Claus and all that old bullshit. Now, that's something different. But as far as the rituals of the holidays, by default, if you're in the prison, you're going to go for the holidays. You have to by default. You're not living on plebiscite island. Like, oh, fuck this shit. I'm not going oh, I don't want to hear no Christmas song. I'm not going to watch the game, football game, Christmas games. I'm not going to watch that. I'm going to go to Plebiscite Island where I'm immune 
to anything to do with the holidays. Right, just stop it. You're not in Plebiscite Island. All right? You're not. By default, you're celebrating the holidays. Don't get on my page talking about, are you celebrating Christmas? No, I'm not celebrating anything. By default, I'm in a system where Christmas is celebrated. So Christmas clothes are being sold. Yeah, I had on some snowman pajamas. They're holiday pajamas. And I said, happy Kwanzaa. And they said, fuck a Kwanzaa, nigga. Still the white man. Stop it. Let's stop it. Yes, by default, you are. Yeah, all that you're gonna refuse to do this. Stop it. Stop. If you got kids, you don't you, you got your kids some presents. Yes, I got kids presents. I have babies. Of course, I'm, you're gonna get your kids presents for the holidays. Of course you are. Now, some of these niggas talking about they didn't, I, I ain't getting no kids, no presents. Oh, motherfucker, you didn't get your kids pregnant presents. You didn't get no presents for your kids because you don't pay child support. All right. Don't be one of them niggas, you know, motherfucker. Yeah. It ain't like you doing something conscious by not giving your kids some toys, motherfucker. You just don't pay child support and you haven't seen your kids in three months. Yeah, some, some of you already neglect your kids and you try to tie that into some conscious um, referendum or something. No, no, it don't work like that, nigga. You ain't seen your kids in months. You haven't bought your kids nothing. <laughs> No, you celebrate it by default. I don't celebrate anything, but you so we all celebrate by default, just by being in the system that celebrates it and the system dominates and controls you. It's prison, guys. Y'all better come to terms with that. Y'all can play this game all day. Just like in prison. I've been to jail before in jail. You eat when they serve for, for, for the holidays, when they serve some turkey. No, I want black folks to understand what the what the game is. People want to play this game. The niggas want to play the plebiscite island game. No, stop it. They stop conning each other. Like in jail, they give you turkey. Motherfuckers eat that turkey. That's celebrating. Huh? Like Kwanzaa is a bootleg Christmas. Right. So listen. <laughs> So let's stop with the plebiscite island shit, all right? You don't live on plebiscite island. You, you're sitting right up here eating a pumpkin loaf, you dig? watching the game at home with your family, you dig? With a Christmas sweater on, all right? Let's stop playing. And let's be real. I'm a historian. Now, look, if we want to get real, we can get real about certain things. Um, we all know, and I broke this down before, St. Nicholas is based on a black man who's Turkish from um, um, the Bari region of Turkey, St. Nicholas of Bari. So the St. Nicholas was really black. Oh, we can break all this stuff down. So I already know. I already know all that stuff. Trust me, I already know. Um, so let's not get silly, some of you non-FBA niggas, because y'all always trying to talk some silly, goofy shit. All right? So you celebrate Kwanzaa. Look, by default, everybody celebrates the holiday. You can call it what you want, but your ass is going to be at home. Nothing else is open, and you're going to eat something that's Christmas-themed, holiday-themed. You hear? No matter what religion you practice, in this system of white supremacy, you're going to be doing some holiday activity. Yeah, now Karanga, yeah, that's another thing. The man who create, created Kwanzaa. Now, we do know that Karanga was connected. He was clicked in with the FBI, part of the Pro program. Many years, people have been accusing him of being a snitch. There's a lot of merit to that. Yeah. Yeah, pumpkin loaf, holiday stuff. That's holiday stuff. All right, but let's, let's get into some game here. All right, but we're here. By the way, go get the book, Foundational Black American Race Baiter. Get that right now. There's a link below on Amazon. Y'all need to be getting that. Also, we got some great buck-breaking NFTs. A lot of y'all need to learn about the NFT game. 
a lot of you need to learn about that. Um, the NFT game is a real hot commodity right now. This is where you can buy certain digital items and they will have monetary value. Potentially, the, the price will go up and you can resell them later. You can make a, a nice chunk of change if you know what you're doing with the NFTs, ladies and gentlemen. We got some great NFT deals going on with the Buck Breaking series. And you can click the link down there below at our OpenSea page. We're also, when we got the new movie coming out, we're going to have some um, NFTs for that as well. So you guys stay up on that. But what we're talking about, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about the die vestment game. This is what we're going to talk about on today's broadcast. Hit that thumbs up button. Hit the like button, ladies and gentlemen. We're talking about the die vestment game. On my last few broadcasts, I've been talking about how a lot of these sisters are with these zaddies. And a lot of sisters are turning up dead. Yeah? A lot of these sisters are turning up dead out here. Yeah? And we got to look into this. Now, what's interesting, when we talk about some of certain sisters turning up dead, a lot of the bed wenches out here are, instead of focusing on zaddy and why these killer zaddies are on the loose, they're up here trying to criticize us. Why y'all black men, y'all seem to like when the black women be getting killed. No, we don't. No, we don't. No, we don't. Y'all start projecting. No, 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 no. A lot of the bedwinters still won't criticize Zaddy. These white men out here slaying sisters. And they're, the bedwinters are still trying to find a way to blame black men. And it, family, it's getting to the point where I do a broadcast about it. And then the very next day, another crazy killing happens. Um, these relationships that sisters have with these Zaddies, what the hell is going on? Let's look at some of the stories here. Let me go to the drawing board. Let me go to the storyboard here. So many stories coming out. Um, one sister out here in Ohio. Let me find this page. This sister here in Ohio. Let me show this real quickly. This sister here, her and her zaddy, they have two kids and it was a murder-suicide. Kara and Joseph Anderson and their two young boys were all found dead. This is, Zaddy killed her and the babies. He killed his own kids, then killed himself. Okay? Man, y'all better understand what's going on with these killer Zaddies. This thing is real. We're not saying this. Listen. When we point this out, the mammies and bedwinches all well, oh no, -uh, y'all just using this to try to disparage us and discourage us from getting us a zaddy. Y'all just hate to see us happy. Y'all trying to take away our joy. Come on, it's time to stop being silly out here. When we point out all of these situations where sisters are getting caught up. That's out of genuine concern because a lot of times the signs is they are there and a lot of these white men, they don't really get punished for it. And you got these funky little musty bedwenches on YouTube and in the little divestment movement trying to sit up here and, and promote this to you and they're taking you out of the water into the frying pan, ladies. This is some real stuff out here. There was one situation where a sister had her a zaddy and he gave her some meth or whatever. They got on meth, they had a meth binge and this sister ended up killing her zaddy. She and this sister ended up killing him. Yeah, Brittany Wilson. All right, she killed him and she's smiling in the mugshot. So, you know, she did a reversal. She did a reversal on this guy. Oh, let me find something very interesting about that story I want to share with you. Hold on one second. 
Hold on one second. There's something very interesting I want to point out. Hold on. Cause this was in, I, I want to say Missouri. Where was that? I mean, all this stuff is happening great. I, I don't know what's going on with these sisters and these zaddies. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, now listen to this, man. Hold on. Let me show y'all something interesting about this story. Okay, hold on. Da, 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 da. Okay. Listen, look, look at this. Now, this is a story. This is kind of interesting, guys. This is a story on MSN, MSNBC or whatever. Woman stabs boyfriend to death with sword to rid him of entities living inside of his body, grins in her mugshot. So they kind of mad that this sister, see, they don't want this to become a thing. These sisters are laying up with these zaddies and they end up killing them. They don't want this to become a thing. They like it to be the other way. To, they arrived to find the woman on the lawn in blood splattered clothing and her boyfriend dead, riddled with stab wounds. Um, this is, look at this right here. She said her and her boyfriend had take, taken meth earlier that day. She said she'd been setting him free of several entities that, been, that had been living inside of his body for the past months. She also said that he had been harvesting body parts from individuals. Mm. She said this guy was harvesting people's body parts. So what was this dude into? It's... Is she crazy or is, well, or is there something to that? Uh-oh. Huh. So this dude allegedly, uh, is it the meth talking or was this dude out here killing people and then trying to get her next? Were they into some kind of Satan worship or something like that? It, it might. What is it? Was this dude cannibalizing people? What's going on? Maybe this woman ain't that crazy. Is it the meth? Maybe it ain't the meth talking. Maybe it's not the meth talking. Let's be real. The cannibalism game is real. Let's be clear. They still cannibalizing folks out here. Hold on. Let me show y'all something. Let me show you something. This just had this came out today, another story. This white LGBT man got another white LGBT man and ate his genitals. Accused cannibal charged with eating his grinder's date's genitals. He's doing court. All right? This just came out this week. This guy's going to court. A man accused of slitting his victim's throat, hanging him from the basement, and eating his testicles in a grisly Christmas Eve murder will return to court early next year. All right. So this dude out here eating dick. All right, look at these cra this crazy zaddy. So yeah, it ain't far-fetched to believe that that other zaddy was over here harvesting organs. You understand? Sisters, we say this with care. Y'all better be careful around these people. Y'all better be careful around these people. This thing is real out here. Hit that thumbs up button. Hit that like button. This thing is real out here. Family, y'all don't understand. They keep promoting all of this stuff in the media, telling y'all to get with these zaddies, sisters. Y'all don't know what you're getting with. And we ain't saying this because we all we ain't trying to hate and all of the 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 bayang wearing YouTube mammies out here trying to tell y'all no them these niggas are just hating these dusty beta males they the the white man just see how hard we slay we don't come to play we came to slay zaddy see how hard we slay that's why zaddy choosing us they just mad cause zaddy want us if y'all don't stop. Y'all better stop with all that we came to slay and we didn't play to stop all that goofy shit. Because Zaddy didn't come to chill, he came to kill. All right? You came to 
You didn't come to play. You came to slay and daddy, zaddy came to kill, not to chill. All right. Zaddy is not chilling. He's killing. And this is the thing. When Zaddy gets to killing, y'all family is calling me. This is the die vestment game y'all playing. Now, family, there's another story that came out this week, and I was the one that made this story go viral. I made it go viral than a lot of other folks because the, the white media was going to downplay this story. The white media was going to downplay this story, ladies and gentlemen. They were downplaying this story. I put two and two together here and started putting it on out there because they were going to bury this story. You understand? It was a story of a sister who does YouTube videos. Very lovely sister. Very, very lovely sister. She was on some website and she found her an older white man. She found her a zaddy online. And she ended up dead. And the police are acting like, okay, this is mysterious. We don't know how she died. Oh, this is so mysterious. We don't know what's going on. This is a mysterious death. And the white man who found her dead, he's not even a suspect. Hold on. Let me find this thing. Let me find that real quickly. He's not even a suspect. Hold on. Let me find the main part of that story. Hold on one second. Where is that? Where is that? And I'm going to play the, the news article of it. Hold on. If I can find the thing, hold on. Uh, let me just play the news article of it. Okay, let me play the, okay, here it is. Okay. Beautiful sister, this sister right here, beautiful sister. And um, hold on, where are we at? Where are we at? Okay. Bridgeport family left with unanswered questions following the untimely death of their daughter. OK, so let me play the, the news story here. I want y'all to hear this. I want y'all to hear this news story. Listen to this. Hold on. Hold on. Who had the whole world at her feet. They say Lauren had met, quote, an older white man on the dating app Bumble. And it was he who alerted police to Lauren's death. The family says they are not satisfied with answers they got from an investigator. I asked him about the guy. He just made it seem like the guy was a nice guy. It was nothing to investigate. The only contact that we have had was from a very insensitive, condescending, and arrogant detective. Lauren's dad reading a scathing statement saying police failed to extend the most basic courtesies and told his family to stop calling. Councilwoman Maria Pereira says police owe Lauren's mom an apology. She sent a really... ...to a beautiful young wow. woman who had the wow. whole world wow. at her feet. Okay. Uh, let me go back to the story here. Uh, this is her beautiful sister. Lovely sister, out here trying to get a zaddy. And this is the transcript of what the police told the family. She met an older white man on Bumble. It was he who alerted the police. Her brother asked authorities about the man, but was told that he was a nice guy with no need to be investigated. The father said the only contact they had with the police is a very insensitive, arrogant, condescending detective. Okay, listen. Yes, I'm eating. I'm eating. Y'all forgive me for eating. But listen. Listen. Family and sisters, listen to me. It sounds like the police is in on it. Sounds like, allegedly, I'm going to say allegedly for legal reasons. Allegedly, this white male, who I'm going to say is a presumed suspect to us, sounds like the police is protecting this guy because they might be in on him. See, this is the problem with the divesting thing. And then when sisters who divest try to do the comparison, well, black men be killing sisters too. The black men go to jail, all right? The black men go to jail. The black men don't have detectives talking about, we're not going to investigate this nigga who found you dead because he seems like a nice guy. 
They don't say that about us. If a black man does anything to you, they don't say, oh, he's a nice guy. We ain't going to even bother looking into him. They're protecting this white man as they do a lot of white men. Family, let me, let me say this. Look. A lot of these police agencies and white people, listen, they do these ritualistic murders, okay? Black folks, we don't take the threat of white supremacists within law enforcement. We don't take that seriously. We don't take it seriously. Hold on. Hold on. We don't take that seriously. Hold on one second. Oh, I'm, I'm looking up something. Okay. Oh, I'm putting something together. Hold on. Um, okay. We don't take it seriously. Family, law enforcement is completely inundated. With, with white supremacist groups. I'm talking about open, card-carrying white supremacists. Okay? I want black people to really get that in their heads. And these people do initiation killings, guys. They get to kill people in order to move up certain ranks within these white supremacist groups. And the people they want to target and kill are black people. That's why we see these mysterious deaths that never get solved. These are the police involved in that. Whenever we see these stories about a black person being found hung and they're talking about it's a damn suicide, the cops are nudging each other. They know what it is. They know that it was most likely one of them who did it. And they talk about it among themselves and they get little ranks within these white supremacist groups. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? This is not a conspiracy. I want y'all to feel me on this. We really need to, black folks, we sit here and wait on them to confess. Okay? They get some people who ain't even in law enforcement to do the dirty work for them. They get their little buddies to do it. A lot of these white people who are not with law enforcement, they do the dirty work for them. That's why they keep propping up Kyle Rittenhouse. He was deputized and he did the dirty work for them. So they, the city hands are clean. Kyle Rittenhouse did that murder. So now the city, they don't have to pay no money. Now, Kyle Rittenhouse, somebody's going to take him into civil court pretty soon. But the city's hands are clean. The police unions, hands are clean. They get this little vigilante fuckboy to do their dirty work. Their hands are clean. So they do this stuff with some of these deputized white supremacists. They do the dirty work for them. Yeah, the Atlanta child murders. We know that was police and the Klan involved. And speaking of that, I, I, I really want black folks to understand how serious this is. There was a story that came out this week. And I'm still talking about this girl getting killed by Zaddy. Or allegedly, allegedly, this guy is one white man. He went, he was working with the FBI. He went undercover to expose KKK members. And I don't like for them to use KKK. This is, this is the media getting on code still. Because the groups that this guy was exposing, I can almost guarantee they weren't just KKK. They don't put the Proud Boys and the Oath Keepers and all of these same groups in the same vicinity as the KKK, which they are. So I, I don't like the fact that the media is trying to just put this all on the KKK. The KKK is a caricature to a certain degree. But this guy here, understand when they mention KKK, they also mean the Proud Boys and the Oath Keepers and the Three Percenters and all of these other white supremacist groups. So this white man, he went on, he went undercover down in Florida. Just one white man. And he said, man, the white supremacists within law enforcement is a major problem. It's more serious than people are willing to, to acknowledge. 
This is one white man. He said that all of it, all of the police, the 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 jailers, the prosecutors, all of these man, it is inundated with white supremacists down in Florida. He said it's a major problem. He's talking about clan members, the whole nine. He's talking about how the police are sitting up here orchestrating assassinations. He helped stop the assassination of a black man. They were about to target a black man and have a, a, a black man killed. They were plotting. He stopped that. Family, this is a, a this one dude. This is just one dude who went undercover. This one and said this shit is crazy. So you can just imagine how it is all over the country. All right? I want black people to understand this threat. It's completely infested. There's an infestation of white supremacists in law enforcement. Florida, it's just, they ain't even hiding it no more, really. So we better understand that part of the game, family. We better understand that part of the game. Family, and out here in L.A., where I'm from, Family out here, you can't get into certain police positions unless you're a part of these white supremacist gangs. You understand? That's a part of getting in there. you got to be a part of one of these gangs to move up the ranks. That's what Chris Dorner had to turn up for. Again, Chris Dorner, had, he said, hey, man, these people in the department, they sit around here. I'm a cop, and they're running around calling us nigger to our faces. Man, these people are rotten to the core. I joined the police to do the right thing, man. I've joined some, some Nazi shit. The, Chris Dorna said, hey, man, the only way to fix this, we got to start methodically taking them out. Chris Dorna said, we have to take them out, and I'll be first. We got to start getting their names and just pulling up. You understand? We got to start pulling up. You feel me? So listen. Old girl got, got, was up here with this zaddy and the police is up here protecting this zaddy. The police is protecting zaddy. Family, it looks like they're going for soft targets in order to move up the ranks. So in order for these people to be initiated to take this little blood oath to get in these organizations, in order for them to do that, they have to get a body on them. They got to kill somebody. And they got to kill somebody black. This is straight out of the Turner Diary books. I impose people to study that book. The book, The Turner Diaries, is about a white supremacist group. They, they come out here to California. They create a white supremacist enclave and for people to get in the white supremacist enclave, the, the admission is the head of a black person. They got to kill a black person to get in. So these people have been acting out this Turner diary stuff for the longest. So a part of these, remember out here and um, remember uh, about a year or so ago when the black woman got killed on the subway by this white supremacist, his ass went and changed into an Aryan Nation outfit. He changed into um, some white shoelaces, some black shoes and white shoelaces. Remember that? I told people about the significance of the tan pants, black shoes and white shoelaces. A lot of that is that prison skinhead Aryan Nation thing. He changed into an Aryan Nation type of outfit and killed a black woman. That was an initiation thing. So when he went back to prison, he would be a, a high-ranking white supremacist in prison. Amber Geiger, remember I pointed out one of her relatives had on the black shoes and the white shoelaces, and he was throwing up a white supremacist hand signal. You see, we, we connect these dots. See, all of these things are relative. So you got to start connecting these dots. All of these things are very relative. And even Amber Geiger, remember, her partner, they were bragging, her and her police partner were bragging about how they killed black people. Her partner had killed some other, killed black people himself. So they were all, this whole thing about 
killing an innocent black person, that's like an initiation thing. That's what I think Amber Geiger was doing when she ran up in both in John's apartment. She didn't, all that stuff about it was a mistake. That's a crock of BS. All of that about a mistake, no. That looked like an initiation where she was going to try to move up, allegedly move up in the ranks within the police department when you kill an innocent black person. Yeah, when they spill blood, they get red laces. Yeah. It's real, man. We better understand how deep this thing is, black people. We better understand how deep this thing is. And how the police are in on it and how the police protect these people. And remember, white supremacists are cowards by nature. They go for soft targets. So kids and women are very easy targets. So if you are white supremacist and you want to body somebody, you want to, let's say you're a white supremacist and you want to get some notches on your belt for the prison gang. All you got to do is pander to these bed wenches because they know these bed wenches are, are, are insecure. A lot of them are self-hating. They're desperate for a zaddy. So they know these white men get on these, these dating apps. Hey, ooh, I, hey, I love some chocolate. I love me some chocolate. Are there any hot sisters out there for a white boy? And his DMs are going to blow up. He's going to have a, a DM full of victims. He's going to have a DM full of goddamn victims. It's easy. If a white supremacist wanted to body, wanted to catch a black body, they know where to go. It's easy. This is why we keep seeing sisters getting bodied by these dudes. This is why we keep seeing it over and over and over again. The white supremacists are cowards by nature and they go for soft targets. There was another story that came out this week and this was pretty sad. Uh, a lot of people thought that this kid was adopted, but this kid was not adopted. There's a little black kid whose mom is white, some little hillbilly white mom. So she had a baby with some random black man. So his, the little boy's mother was white and she got into a relationship with a damn, uh, uh, another white woman, another stud. So she was dating a stud. So the stud, this white LGBT stud ended up killing the damn black boy. That broke my heart. I keep warning people about these damn studs, about these white LGBT people. Hold on, where's that story? Where's that story? I'm looking for it, hold on. Come on, damn it. Right here, this story here. This broke my heart, man. The abuse, alleged abuse in the death of a nine-year-old boy. Body showed cuts, bruises, swelling when he arrived to the hospital. Alicia Lynn Miller arrested in connection with the death of Elijah Thomas Ross. Very horrible story. Poor kid, man. Man, let me tell you something. Boy, when these when these suspected white supremacists, boy, when they get a black child, boy, when they isolate them, mm, it's abuse time. It's buck-breaking time, ladies and gentlemen. That is buck-breaking. Family, this is why I go in on these white supremacists, LGBT people. I, 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 I am not afraid of them. The white LGBT, they sat up here and they didn't finesse y'all niggas and scared y'all into not going in on them because they didn't sat here and said that they were an aggrieved minority. And boy, they have the same anti-black venom as the rest of the dominant society. I don't play with them. Y'all niggas can be scared. I am not going to be scared of these folks. They are the worst when it comes to black kids. The white LGBT are some of the racist, most venomous, deadliest people when it comes to black people. When they get around our kids, they are the worst. The worst, the worst, the worst. And I'm doing a buck breaking part two. That's why I got buck breaking NFTs and the white supremacists be complaining and whining. I don't give a damn. I'm going to keep exposing their anti-black racism and venom. You dig? Somebody said, am I wasting time trying to save divestors? Listen, because my thing is this, man. 
the, the divestors, y'all sit up and play this game, but their families always hit me up. That's why I be knowing about the stories. A lot of, and this is the thing. A lot of these stories are actually buried by the media. The media don't start telling the truth until we do. A lot of these stories are buried. I know about these stories because almost every other week, somebody's family has hit me up. Hey, Tyree. Hey, brother. Man, can you uh, promote the GoFundMe page for my cousin? My cousin is missing and they just, they, she was missing for a week and the police ain't even questioning her boyfriend. I said, uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. When I hear that, when I hear the police ain't questioning the boyfriend, uh-oh, this is a divestment situation. Oh, she had a zaddy. The minute I hear that, see y'all family be hitting me up. Y'all be doing all this bed winching and mammying it up. And then when you're missing, I'm the first person your family calls. Yeah. They y'all missing, and the only thing they found was some some Joloff and some divestment wig strands. Yeah. They got your divestment wig strands in a plastic bag. And your family out here crying. I don't try to mock the death of anybody. I don't, nobody deserves to die, especially a black person. A black person does not deserve to die, especially at the hands of a suspected white supremacist. But damn it, y'all going to have to stop jumping out of the water into the frying pan. Y'all going to have to cut that out. This thing is real out here. I'm not trying to put the cape on, but damn it. And and brothers out here, y'all y'all banging these white broads and you're having these kids and they're abusing the kids. Black men, take care of these kids. Make sure your kids are cool. Now, I don't know what nothing about that, that, that white woman. Just this poor child was abused. And I don't know. She could have been a meth head and it could have been a, a, she could have fucked a black dude who was on the pipe. Who knows? But we got to take care of these kids. We got to look out for these kids because those in the dominant society, look, the people in the dominant society, they're trying to make sure that their kids are going to be the next cow Rittenhouse. You see this right here, this white dude out here with his boys. Look at this right here. I put this on my social media. This white man bragging about his kids trying to be like Kyle Rittenhouse. He's like, my kids every day. Look at this. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. What'd you say, Corbin? I'm Kyle. Kyle who? Kyle Rittenhouse. <laughs> well, you see that? See, while y'all neglecting your damn kids, these white supremacists got their kids running around with guns playing I'm Kyle Rittenhouse. All right. Now, family, these little potential school shooters. Now, a lot of this is going to backfire on them. OK, let's be clear. A lot of this is going to backfire on them. I, I've talked about this the other day. This is why a lot of the social media pages are taking Kyle Rittenhouse off their, their platform like TikTok took him off because they know one of these kids. I, I talked about this the other day. They know one of these kids are going to go up in school with a I love Kyle Rittenhouse shirt on or something and start shooting in the name of Kyle Rittenhouse. They're going to be dropping Kyle Rittenhouse's name when they're doing these school shootings now. They're going to be calling his name out. And then when the lawsuits start popping off, the social media, they're going to be backing off of it. Yeah. So a lot of them are trying to save themselves. They, they've they been kind of putting them on, putting them off of social media because they know the backlash is coming. They already know where this shit is going. They're making a hero out of this coward. They're making a hero out of them. Yeah. And speaking of killers, there was a dude down in Miami who was killing people. There was a dude down there in Miami who was killing people. 
and they, they called him a serial killer because I think he was targeting homeless people. And I want to know who these homeless people were that he was killing. They said this dude down here in Miami, they called him a serial killer because he was, there's some homeless people that he killed. All right. And his name is Willie Suarez Maceo, Maceo or Maceo. This is the guy right here. All right. This is the guy right here. Suspected serial killer. That's them trying to put a black face on the word serial killer. I don't know how many people he killed. 25-year-old um, Willie Suarez Maceo or Maceo. Now, this guy here, when we see the name, he's clearly not FBA. Not only is he not FBA, He's actually Cuban. Let's look at his arrest record. I want y'all to notice something, something that I've been telling you about these guys for the longest. He's not one of us. All right, let's be clear. This is not one of us. This is his arrest affidavit. All right. If you look at over here, he's Cuban. Wait, right here, ethnicity, Cuban, C-U-B, Cuban, race, white. All right. So on this dude's paperwork, he's white and his ethnicity is Cuban. Hispanic? No. He doesn't even view himself as Hispanic. He's white. Ethnicity Cuban. I done told y'all about these cats. These folks are identified as white. He's an island boy. He's a white island boy. I done told y'all. Them Cubans, that yes, them Cubans come over here, be darker than us, getting classified as white. Black folks, I keep telling you, I keep telling you, these people do not look at us as a camaraderie group. They only use the people of color thing when it is convenient. I keep, when you start looking at these folks' paperwork, their paperwork tells the truth. They get around us and be lying. Oh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a my grandma, my abuela is black, so I'm, I'm black too. I'm, yeah, I'm just as black as you, buddy. You know, stop. Stop. You look at their paperwork, all of their paperwork says the same thing, dude. All of their paperwork says the same thing. I'm white. They be, boy, they can't. They can't mark that W down fast enough, dude. They can't put W down fast enough. You understand? Damn near all of them are like that. Get that through your heads, black people. When they talk about a black-brown coalition, who's brown? Who in the hell is brown? Because they look at themselves as white and legally their status is white. You understand? They get around us and play this little goofy game. Uh-uh. Ain't no black and brown coalition. I got to get my people to get that through their heads. And speaking of these other groups, there was a video that popped up with the um, prime minister of Ethiopia talking about foundational black Americans. I want y'all to listen to this. And then you have some of these other tethers in here agreeing with this dude. But listen, this is the, and he's talking in whatever the language it is over there, Aramaic. I don't know what the language is. But um, listen to this or watch this. Okay, watch this. And I know a lot of Ethiopians listen. This is the prime minister. He's like, African Americans cause their own suffering in post-slavery America. Now, let, you read, just read the captions. Hold on while he's talking, because a lot of you can't understand what he's saying. Hold on. During the long lifespan of America's rules, the most victimized community were black and Jews. Now, 
The difference is when Jews began to have some rights after the civil rights movement, their songs, poems, films became forward thinking. You how the Jews would be able to conquer the world, how they would create economic power. But blacks stood there lamenting, yesterday they beat us and killed us and so on. And then the audience chuckled. Make, making the current generation of black people live in the past. Jews made their people think about the future. Okay, let me let me stop before I go on. This is not true. The Jewish community go on and goes on and on about never forget. They got museums everywhere about never forgetting. So this is not true. There's a Jewish museum out here in LA on every other corner down there on Wilshire Boulevard where they never let you forget. They never let you forget what happened to them, rightfully so. What he's saying is BS. What he's saying is some BS. Hold on. Hold on. I don't know. And as you don't know, I don't know. And that's what I don't know. In less than 50 years, Jews became prosperous, Jews became powerful, blacks became free and poor. And he, the black man, has got his freedom, but he can sing. Hold on, what did that say? What was that? But he cannot give out, get out of poverty. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. He can sing, but he cannot get out of poverty. Okay, that's the Ethiopian prime minister talking about us. Talking about we can't get out of poverty. Ain't that some shit? The prime minister of Ethiopia is sitting up here talking about foundation of black Americans. How we can't get out of poverty, ladies and gentlemen. And family, and this is this is Ethiopia right here. He's talking about us, how we can't get out of poverty. This is Ethiopia right now, okay? I know we got the Ethiopian folks listening because y'all sit up and chuckle and giggle over this type of stuff. This is this is Ethiopia. He talking about we can't get out of poverty. This is Addis Ababa, Abada, Ababa, whatever. Okay, that's that's where they're living right now. There's no place in America where black folks live like this. Black Americans, foundational black Americans have never lived like this. Foundational black Americans have never lived like this, first of all, if we want to go there. So all of this thing about pointing the finger at us about poverty, dude, fix your poverty there. Y'all don't even have running water in many places over there. You, you're pointing your finger at us? What the hell is that about? Yeah? Dude. And listen. You're talking about what, what Jewish people did. Well, the, the, the Jewish people who prospered were the ones who could pass for white. There's black Jewish people now who are being discriminated against over in Israel right now, particularly the Ethiopian Jews right now over in Ethiopia getting discriminated against. But you ain't got no smoke for them. You got all the smoke for us, but you ain't saying nothing about what's going on with the Ethiopians in Israel right now. The women over there are getting sterilized for sterilizations. You ain't got no smoke for that, but you got smoke for us and we ain't doing nothing to you. In fact, the fact that you were able to come over here, we were the ones who fought to help you get over here. And that, that kills me when these people have all the, the smoke for us. Talking greasy about us. But you ain't got the smoke for the people that's really putting work on your ass over there in Israel. Particularly the Ethiopians. You're right over there. Ain't got no smoke. They're beating you senseless in the streets over there. You, you dig? See, people like to take the cowardly route. See, 
part of all of these other cultures is all of them have to get together and have anti-foundational black American hatred. That's how all of these other groups get on code with one another. They all get on this anti-foundational black American hatred code. You dig? Even the people in many of these African countries who's living in poverty and squalor, they get over here or they try to come over here, they wherever they are, and try to spew this anti-black hatred. There was another dude, I was some um, Sudanese dude, a dude from Sudan up here trying to troll the other day. I had to get on his ass. Because he was going, he was mad because I was calling out the white supremacists for their, their buck breaking. And this dude here, hold on. Where's this guy? I was going in on his ass. He was up here trying to defend the white men that I was clowning. Hold on, this guy here. This guy here, Gregory Butler. So he was like, because I, I was talking about buck breaking, he was like, Oh, you'd go in, are you into gay race play? Well, leave these white people alone. Why are you talking about the buck breaking myth? Now he's been on 4chan. That's some stuff that they talk about on 4chan that buck breaking is a myth and buck breaking goes on today. So this guy right here, this guy, he's a Sudanese dude. I think he's living over here now, but he escaped from Sudan. So I had to clown him about his homeland and show him about the buck breaking that was going on in his homeland. He, and he was like, oh, that's an article about women being raped in Sudan. I said, dude, you better go fix the buck breaking that's happening over there right now. Here's another, here's a story about his homeland. He's over here whining about us calling out the buck breaking that's going on here. And this is an article about what's going on in his homeland. Where's the story? Hold on. Um... With these kids over there, yeah. Former captives recount crimes of boy rape in the Sudan. See, yeah, then he got, he shut the hell up. When I start pointing out all the damn rape that goes on over there, here's another one. All the rapings going over there in his own homeland, they're buck breaking little boys over there like crazy. Thousands of boys chained, younger ones raped in Islamic schools in Sudan. So they're chaining and raping boys now. In this dude's homeland. He shut the hell up when I put them receipts on his ass. Yeah, when you start pulling receipts, they shut the hell up. We're not cowardly enough to run from it. We call it out. We see the buck breaking that goes on and we're standing up to it and calling it out while your ass ran away from your homeland and you're over here trying to protect the white men that we're going in on. You dig? Let's be very clear. Hit that like button. Hit that thumbs up button. We got a lot of people in here tonight. Y'all need to be getting the book Foundation of Black American Race Beta while you're playing. You need to get that book. Yeah, you start pulling the receipts on these folks, they get some act right. They get some act right real quickly. Yeah? So look, I want us to be in a position, I want us to start being in a position to challenge the deprived, the, the depraved authority that we have. We got to start being in positions or putting ourselves in positions to challenge that. Again, I don't really like arguing with, with other black people. I just shut little coons like that down. But I don't like arguing with them too much because again, Arguing with other victims who are really trying to show out for brownie points. To me, that's pointless. To me, that's absolutely pointless. We have to start thinking in terms of nation building. You understand? We got to start thinking in terms of building nations. I want black folks to get this mindset going. I want us to get this mindset going, ladies and gentlemen. Um, black folks, we got to start being productive in everything we do. We have to start thinking in terms of, and I keep saying this, when white folks disappear, what are we going to do to build? See, we've, a lot of black folks 
We got this thing where we want to whine and complain to other black people for attention. We got this thing where we're just satisfied with getting attention. That ain't going to work. That only works in the system of white supremacy. If the, the white people are not here to rule and dominate over you, you're going to have to build. You out here whining and campaigning for attention, that's not going to work. We got to start being builders. And we have the capacity to do it. We've just been taught a different value system. Black folks, we've been taught to let white people handle all the heavy lifting and we just sit up here party. We party and show off for other Negroes. You understand? We're taught to just sit here, party, show out, and look for other Negroes to show our nigger trinkets to. And a lot of these foreign people, y'all better get on code. Y'all just want to get on over here and get around, eat off us and then get with white folks behind closed doors to talk greasy about us. Y'all better get on code. We got to whip everybody into shape and make everybody get on code. We have to get all of us on code. We got to get off this thing where we're just com completely dependent on white mommy, white daddy. We got to get off that. We're going to have to learn how to do international trade with other black people. We're going to have to learn how to feed our people. We're going to have to learn how to take care of our people and their medical needs. This is why the other day I saw something very despicable. There was one of these foreign tethers. They were t All of these tethers were talking about Dr. Sebi. And Dr. Sebi was not an FBA himself, but he did a lot of stuff to help us and other people globally. So... Again, we're the ones, Foundation of Black Americans, we hold up the Dr. Sabies and people like that, where these foreign folks are quick to shit on folks like that. Calling him a quack and talking about, yeah, Dr. Sebi, he didn't know what he was talking about. Let me, look, stop. All, these are niggas who are just trying to show out in front of white people. We're going to have to learn and tap back into us healing, our healing properties, our capacity to feed each other family. We got to get back into that. You understand? We got to get back into that. And we know that it's a threat. Look, that's what the Black Panthers were doing. When the Black Panthers were doing that, they were looked at as a threat. That's what made the Black Panthers a threat when they were feeding people. When you start feeding your people, independent of the dominant society, that's that's the first step to nation building. When you start feeding your people, you understand? And I want black people to understand this. See, we've been programmed to think we can't do anything without white mommy, white daddy, unless a white person is there holding our hand and making, building everything, we can't get it done. Family, let me tell you something. We've been healing ourselves and taking care of ourselves for millions of years. Family, we are world builders. This is why I go in on history. I want black folks to understand history. I want us to understand history. Black people, even in Europe, I want you to understand black people. It was black people who were building some of the first hospitals in Europe. Do you know that? Out there in Spain, it was the Moors, some of the first hospitals the modern hospitals as we know it, they were being built in Spain by black Moors. Not only were they building hospitals, they had different wings in these hospitals for different ailments. You understand? We know how to take care of ourselves. We've been taking care of ourselves for the longest. Black folks, you better know history. Us walking around sickly and all this stuff. No, no, no. Black people, we've been healing ourselves for centuries. Not centuries, millions of years. Not only were some of the first hospitals in Europe built by black people, and we know there were hospitals in all, by Aboriginal people in the motherland. But listen, some of the first doctors in America, ladies and gentlemen, were black people. Some of the first doctors in America and what would become America were black 
people. I want black people to understand this, how other groups were so dependent on you. It was the other way around, black folks. In the formation of this country, other people were very dependent on black folks. We were the feeders and the healers. Let's, let's walk through history so black folks can understand this. Some of the first doctors that came into what would become the Americas came into New York. Um, the first doctors, technical doctors. New York was called New Amsterdam. The Dutch owned New York or the land that would become New York. Let me break it down. Understand Holland, Amsterdam, the Dutch. There were a lot of Moors in Amsterdam, Holland. There were a lot of Moors, black Moors there. Let's go back. Let's walk it all the way back. As we know, the Moors were bringing medicinal properties in, um, in Spain and parts of Europe. All of these words and terms with al, alcohol, and all of these things, alchemy, all of these, this got to do with medicine. All of these Arabic words, algebra, they were introducing into European society, black Islamized Moors. The white supremacists in Europe, they first started translating some of those alchemy books really in the 12th century. They just started even reading those books, they, they only started translating those Arabic books that the Moors brought in about alchemy around 1100 something. This is when they could translate it, let alone they couldn't practice it. So it was the Moors who were doing a lot of the healing there. Alkaline, exactly. Look at these words, alchemy, alkaline. And all of these alchemy symbols, if you look at a lot of medieval stuff in Europe, you'll see a lot of stuff with bats, especially when you, you look at heraldry of Moors, you'll see bat wings and all of this stuff. If you look at old um, European images or heraldry that has something to do with the Moors, you'll see bat wings. And even later on, you would see a lot of stuff with bats and stuff and even dragon wings and all that. A lot of that is alchemy. A lot of that has to do with alchemy. These are alchemy symbols. Alchemy is about something dying and the dead, well, well, bats rather. The bat symbol is about something dying and becoming new and um, becoming reborn, something dying. Look at what, this is what alchemy is about. Not, I keep saying, this is what the bat symbol is about when it comes to alchemy. You'll see a lot of the bat symbols popping up. This is where the white supremacists took some of that Morris alchemy and started creating these vampire myths and all of that stuff. That's why Dracula and all of that with the cape that looks like wings and then Dracula, he's dead, but then he turns into a bat and, and he's biting people and all. All of that comes from Moorish alchemy, okay? Those bat symbols, there's Batman and all of this stuff about, you know, a, a person transforming himself. Batman's parents died and then he became something else and he's stalking in the night. He has um, this esoteric knowledge that don't nobody else have. That comes from that Morris alchemy, guys. You understand? But a lot of these people, the, the, the Moors were in Europe freely teaching this stuff. They were like, hey, we, we ain't got nothing to hide. But when they were pushing the Moors out, when they had the Reconquista, they started to slowly push the Moors out. The white supremacists, the Catholic and the Christians, they said, hey, all of this Moorish knowledge, we can't let the world see all this stuff because these guys are very knowledgeable. So we got to kind of suppress all of this knowledge, this alchemy, all of this stuff that they're they're teaching about medicine. We have to suppress that stuff. So they have to suppress that within secret societies, the Masons and all of this stuff, within the Catholic Church. They had to suppress all this stuff so that the general public wouldn't know about it. And they, they did a very good job. But when they ran the Moors out of Spain, 
Many of the Moors went into Holland. They went into Amsterdam. They went up in that area. And remember, Holland, Amsterdam, that area, that became a colony of Spain. Spain dominated that for a second. All right? Spain dominated the um, Holland, Amsterdam area. That was dominant. So a lot of Moors were up there. They were up there practicing medicine. They were up there doing their thing. If you've been to Amsterdam, even today, and I did some lectures out there a couple of years back, had a great time there. How many of you have been to Amsterdam? How many of you have been out there to Holland? If you go out there, they have pharmacies all over the place with these black Moors statues outside of the pharmacies in Amsterdam. They call them yappers. It's spelled G-A-P-E-R. They call these figures yappers because they have their mouths open and there's a pill on the mouth of a moor. They have them at pharmacies all over Amsterdam. Yes, if you've seen it, if you've been to Amsterdam, you've seen this. Let me see if I can pull up a picture for you guys. Hold on. Okay. Okay. It, it looks like the word gapers, but it's the word yappers, all right? Right here. This is all over Amsterdam, okay? Look at this. You go to pharmacies, all right? The yapper. These black moors with a pill in their mouths in pharmacies. I've been to this one right here. There's a couple of them. There's another one. Yeah, they got these things. Okay, these yappers oh, on the pharmacies, okay? So you got to understand the Moors were up there. A lot of the doctors, a lot of the Moors chemists, a lot of the, the Moors medical people were up there. So a lot of black people were trained up there in the, the medical field. So when they, the, the Dutch came over here to the New World, they brought some of those more descendants with them. One of the first doctors in America was a black man named Lucas, what is his name? Sand, Santamy. Yes, Lucas Santamy. It's a black man named Lucas Santamy who was a doctor in New York or in New Amsterdam. And in fact, it was a few black people that they sent over there, there to New Amsterdam and they gave them land because they were very valuable because they were the doctors, they were healing people. Um, the governor Stuyvesant, who Bedford Stuyvesant is named after, they, um, Bedford Stuyvesant allotted them property, land, the whole shebang. Now when the British came, they said, fuck all that. We taking that back. Don't, we don't give niggas rights over here. It's a whole different thing. But same thing out here in Los Angeles with Biddy Mason. Biddy Mason was also healing people. This is why she became so wealthy. Because it was the black people who were the healers. Black people who were the doctors. We were the healers. I want us to understand that they were going to us to be healed. You understand? Who is Tom? Is somebody, do we have a white supremacist in here? Who is Tom? Is somebody who is Tom? View message. Like, okay. Yeah, okay. But so he, he did make a point. The term quit yapping, that's what that comes from. Yapping, the yappers, that's where that comes from. But listen, I'm, I'm still talking about us healing. It was us who was doing the healing. I want us to understand our history. In fact, in South Carolina, ladies and gentlemen, black people were so good at healing, it became a gift and a curse because we were so well versed in natural medical science. That was a good thing and it was a bad thing because if you know how to heal people, if you know how to put herbs and, and remedies and sticks and branches and plants, if you know how to put all that stuff together to heal people, you also know how to put that shit together to kill people. And that was the problem that they had with black folks in South Carolina because black folks 
were alchemists too, and they were enslaved, and black folks knew how to go out here and put a little something together and get rid of these white folks. At the time, white people really didn't know about medical science. They really didn't know. So they didn't know whether they got poisoned or not. They didn't know. But they suspected it. So what they would do, they would find a black person and elevate a black person who knew how to heal them from the poisons. There was one black person in particular who came up with a remedy for snake bites. It was a black slave named Caesar. In fact, he was so good at, um, at, at healing people, they called him Dr. Caesar. There was a black man in North Car South Carolina. They called him Dr. Caesar, who was a slave, an old slave out there in South Carolina. And he, he finessed, he finessed his freedom. He actually got his freedom. He was healing so many white people because white people were getting poisoned left and right and they were afraid of snake bites and he would heal them. Dr. Caesar, I want y'all to look up Dr. Caesar. Yeah, those root folks out, those Geechee, Gullah Geechee root people, that shit is real out there in South Carolina. That shit is real. And this brother was healing the white people. Dr. Caesar, that's his name. Y'all Google that name. It was a real black man. He was a slave in South Carolina. My brother saw that the white folks was getting poisoned left and right. So he struck a deal. He said, hey, listen, Massa, I can heal you. All of the poisons, I, I can heal all that. I'll show you. And there were white people who went to this um, court meeting or whatever, who he brought as witnesses, some, some well-respected white people who said, yeah, I, I had this and I got poisoned and I got healed. And another white man, yeah, my son was poisoned and he got healed. Yeah, black Negro Caesar helped my family. So he's like, look, listen, why don't you give a motherfucker some freedom? If I keep helping you, if I help y'all with some of these little remedies I got, why don't y'all let motherfucker hold a piece of that freedom? And not only that, let me get about 500 of them things every month for the rest of my life. And he got it. So my brother finessed him a little pension. He got his freedom and he finessed a pension out of the ass. Yeah. So y'all look up Dr. Caesar snake bite remedies. Yeah, they gave him his freedom and they gave him his props. And, it, you know, he, he, he got his little paper. He got his paper. But this was how dependent they were on us to heal them and for them to get certain black folks to give them certain benefits and tangibles for saving them. Yeah, he finessed him a good little bag out of it. You understand? So yeah, uh, let me let me see. There's a let me see if there's an article on this brother, Doctor Caesar, one of our foundational Black American enslaved brothers. Here it is, right here, Doctor Caesar and his antidote for poison in 1750. All right, yeah, he gave him the antidote. He told him what to do, what to put together. So this was very common, man. This was very common. It was black people. I, I want us to tap back into that. I want us to understand that we know how to take care of ourselves because we've taken care of so many other people. We got to stop being afraid of doing that. You have those conjure women and all that. See, we've been taught now, now that they done got all of the, the, the formulas from our ass, they, they get the formulas from us and then trick us into believing it's all evil now. You think? So we got to get off that. Hold on. Hold on. We got to get off that. You think? So, a, a, a lot of the medicines and stuff that they get, they, they've always studied us to, to learn medicine. They study us over here. They studied... Um, um, Herbalist in Africa, all over the place. 
They've always done that. Okay? So this is real. Excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. Ooh, I had to sneeze. Oh, excuse me. But yeah, we got to stop being afraid of um, our own history. We get afraid. They tell us that conjuring roots and getting roots and getting all of this stuff, they tell us that's evil. You understand? They tell us that's that voodoo hoodoo. There's nothing wrong with voodoo or hoodoo. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it other than white people telling you it's bad and then niggas go for it. Other than white people telling you it's bad and then we go for it because they put all of their spins on it. Thank you, guys. So we got to stop being afraid of that. We got to stop being afraid of our own history. It's very important that we teach our own history. Yo, oh, yeah, they turn our plasma into medicine. Yo, oh, yeah. Yo, oh, yeah. And, and, and again, I always tell people, y'all got to get the book, The Delectable Negro. Y'all got to get the book, The Delectable Negro. And I've talked about that in my movies before. Hold on. This is the book cover for those who have not seen it. Y'all really got to get this book where it talks about how these folks were sitting up here eating black folks. How these people were sitting here eating black people, dude. The Delectable Negro. Yeah, this book breaks it down. Yeah, the, them consuming our flesh, even on slave ships, how they would sit up here and eat us on slave ships. And oh, man, it was in, man, y'all better know what you're dealing with. You better know what the hell you're dealing with when you're dealing with this white supremacist, man. Some of the stuff, man, we we can't really wrap our minds around it. Yeah, some of this stuff scares us. When we start, see, this is the thing. When we start reading about these folks and really learning them, when we start learning about the white supremacists, what, let's keep it a buck. Niggas get scared. When you really start digging into their history and seeing how, how crazy they the white supremacists are, niggas get scared. Like, oh, Lord, they did that. I better leave this white man alone. He is going to get me. Stop. Who's just texting me? Yeah, niggas get scared. Cats get scared. Yeah? Oh, yeah, that book is, yeah, that book is insane. That book is insane. Yeah, they're still eating black folks. They're still eating black folks. Hold on. Hold on. Where's that, that story about that, that cannibal in the UK? Hold on. Where's that cannibal? Um, Canterbury, yeah, the Canterbury Cannibal, where this guy out there in the UK, oh yeah, this one guy, and I talked about this story many, many times, the Canterbury Cannibal, who's over there eating folks, and they were all, he was on online with some other people, yeah, hold on, there was a cannibal over there in the UK, the Canterbury Cannibal, they were all on the dark net. And they called him because they were up here sharing recipes. This guy right here, the Canterbury Cannibal. He told a 14-year-old girl he wanted to behead and eat her. He was found guilty. He was sexually grooming a child. He was corresponding with a cop in New York who was also a cannibal. And they were sharing, this is him, up there posting pictures about how he going to chop folks up. Look at this freak. And he had a black maid or something. He was about to eat her ass and she bounced. And yeah, this cop right here in New York, they were up here sharing recipes. And they caught them. They were on, on the dark web, nigga. They sharing recipes on how to eat niggas like it's like they're Martha Stewart or some shit. They discussed their fantasies, talking about cooking them over open pits. Talking about, yeah, Listen, 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 look Look at this. Yeah, he responded, yeah, the meat isn't quite like pork. It's very meaty. I've eaten a black person. I've eaten a black woman and a white person. So they're sitting up here talking about recipes on eating niggas. Family, you can't make this type of shit up. 
So they're on the dark web sharing recipes on how to prepare niggas. Yes, um, yes, my niggas, I like my niggas sauteed. That 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 nigga meat is kind of tender. I got put a little paprika on there and I put some sage and then I put a little oregano on the feet to really, really tenderize them ankles to get that meat. That meat is real savory. I mean, they're, they're, they're casually making, talking about cooking niggas. Just real casual. They're casually talking about how to prepare niggas to eat them. But we mad because Zaddy is choosing you. What What is Zaddy choosing you for? Yeah. Oh, y'all niggas just mad because Zaddy, Zaddy want to eat this pussy. That's what Zaddy want to eat. All right. He, Zaddy going to eat more than pussy when you get over there. Bed wench Twitter. All you divesters. Talking about we mad because Zaddy choosing you. He choosing you, all right. He's also choosing a nice ketchup and mustard to go with your ass, too, when he eat you. He done chose him some bologna meat to put on top of you. He, he's choosing a lot of shit. He done chose you and some, some baked chicken. Oh, yeah, he, he's going to mix you up with some greens and some, some sauerkraut. Yeah, he's choosing a lot of shit. Since you y'all trying to tell us that we you came to play because Zad, Zaddy wants to see you slay. <laughs> you came to you came as a thought and now you're going to be in the pot because Zaddy's going to boil your ass and then your family going to be calling me. Y'all keep playing these games with these killer fucking Zaddies. You came for a thrill and now you on the grill. Talking all that dumb shit. Y'all keep playing with Zaddy. All right. Anyway, y'all, let me get up out of here. <laughs> That's I've been on here for a long time. That's been today's episode, guys. Listen, go to Amazon, get the book, Foundational Black American Race Beta, ladies and gentlemen. Get that book right now. Foundational Black American Race Beta, get it right now. Great book. If you don't have it, get it on Amazon right now, or you can get an autographed copy at officialfba.com. Also, we got the buck breaking NFTs. You can get your NFT and you can resell it at a later date. It has monetary value. It is a great investment. Get the buck breaking NFTs on my OpenSea page. Click the link below, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, man. Y'all, you guys have a great Kwanzaa. Happy holidays, and you guys be great. Papi, you